Lex Quarterman. I was an actor in Family, which was a part of the Salute Your Shorts Film Festival in 2017. Today I'm talking with Supinder Ratch and Renika Jayapalan, the writer and director of The 410. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Um, so I think one of my first questions about this is, where can I watch more? Because like this was the pilot episode and I want to see the rest of it. Oh, great. So you, you can watch more. There's two more episodes um, and they are streaming on CBC Gem, but only for Canadians, I'm sorry to say. Right now, um, we are, I'm, I'm currently working on three more episodes and then hopefully all six at some point will be available to stream in the US. So hang on. <laughs> Great. Um, so what was the what was the inspiration for this? Well, I've always wanted to be a drug dealer. So <laughs> but I never had the courage to do it. So, no, um, the inspiration for this Lex was uh, I, I come from a, a family of truck drivers. So my dad used to be a truck driver, they now have a trucking school. And um, it was just a, it was an industry that I was very familiar with. And then a couple years, um, a while back actually, while I was in film school and sort of looking for a topic to write about, I started seeing all these articles of these South Asian truck drivers who were sort of caught in this web of the, the drug trade and, you know, were being arrested. And it was so strange for me to see these like sick Punjabi men um, in such a different way. So in, in a way they, you know, they look like my father and my uncles who were truck drivers, they were truck drivers, but then there was this part of them that I didn't understand. And I think that as a storyteller, I, I gravitate towards those things, even as an actor, the, what don't I understand and how can I, how can I sort of make sense of it in my world? And that's sort of why I chose that, that arena. And then also for me as an actor, like I'd never played an anti-hero and, you know, I'd always played the, the good, model minority version and I really wanted to play somebody who was bad and complex and yeah so so that's where the character of Suri kind of came from for me. And um, Renika, how did you get involved with this? Um, well, <laughs> so Sapinder and I were friends. Um, I directed uh, a, a character piece that she uh, created um, when she was in um, CFC Actors School. Conservatory. Uh, conservatory, conservatory. And, and also that I also cast her in one of my own shorts. And um, we just got, got along and then she told me she was um, writing her own sort of series, short form series and she wanted me to direct it so that's kind of how i knew about the project and got into it and um i just thought it was like like just she just said like the characters were were people um from a background that you don't normally see on television or in mainstream media they were you know they're complicated they're flawed they have faults um a lot of conflict and it was just like a messy interesting world to to kind of dive into yeah, I was going to say one of the things that really drew me in for this was like so much of it are the like the standard crime drama, those kinds of things. But being set in such a different culture is just like, I don't know what's going to happen next. Like if this was, you know, either, you know, standard white American or white Canadian culture, we'd be like, OK, I know where this story is going to go. I know what's going to happen. And so that was something I, I really appreciated as just being like, I have no clue what's going to happen next. And so I really want to see more. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was interesting because when, when I first sort of read it and thinking about the, um, the character that uh, characters that Spinner created, I kind of saw Suri as like, like this was like a modern day version of the Godfather, but set in the South Asian community about, you know, an outsider who's like brought into his family's business and, you know, has to figure it out and learn and kind of gets entrenched. And that's kind of, you know, Suri is kind of like the Michael Corleone of that world. And that was interesting because I hadn't seen that um, a lot before. So, yeah. And I even think uh, to me too, it's like even more complex than just the Godfather because that is like 
he has his family business and he's trying to get out and being pulled back in. And what's interesting about this is she's being pulled back into her family's world while also being pulled into this new crime world that she doesn't know. And it's like, that to me is really complicated because it's a, it's a conflict of three different cultures, not just one. Yeah, I think they, I think that the Godfather um, reference is, is, is really, I guess it's really interesting in the sense that like when the Godfather came out, it was sort of like one of the first, like in terms of Italian crime dramas that, and I, and I think that like with Michael Corleone, like one of his like, um, the tension creators was that he didn't want to be identified as, you know, as a mobster. And I think that like part of the, the pushback that I got with this series was that a lot of people, um, because I think that when you come from a community and like back then, you know, the, the Italians weren't that well represented in media. So like when you come from a community that where you don't have representation on screen, uh, a lot of people sort of, you know, threw a lot of flack my way for, you know, if you're going to tell a story about us, wh why this type of story? But they I think want let's... To more positive depictions, but that's also kind of boring, you know? Like I know! Creative <laughs> depictions of, we're all different, so. Yeah. 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 But I think that that, um, that tension between, you know, East meets West or like, like the new immigrant story of the, the world where you land versus the, the country and the culture where, where you come from. I think that those, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying in terms of a, a triangle where it's the family, it's Surrey, and then it's her sort of managing these, these two worlds and where like, who is the third person that sort of like fits in that world. Um, oh, I have another question. Oh, um, what were some of the challenges in either in writing this or getting it together or even just in the, sh the shooting process? Maybe Sapinder, you'd have me writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, piece of cake. Um, yeah. <laughs> writing and that's production. <laughs> Sorry, Renick, I missed that. What did you say? You talk about the writing and then I can talk about production. Um, I think like, so, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you write, Lex. I know that Renika, maybe you, you might identify this, but I just find writing so hard. Like the, because there's so many directions that this story could have gone in with Surrey and then just like, but for me, I think that the biggest hurdle was the, the clarity of the character. And as somebody who, um, and I don't know if we've ever talked about this, Renika, but like something that I discovered maybe even, even after I had written it, I think that like one of the hurdles for me to overcome as an actor writing a character that I knew that I was gonna play was that all of the other characters was, were so clear to me, but then Suri was kind of like a mystery as I wrote her. And I think that like I, you know, like sometimes like suffered from being modest as a, as a writer actor being like, oh, I'm not going to give myself these like big shiny moments, character moments, because I was afraid of people judging me for writing her so big. Um, which is something that like with the, with the next iteration that I'm, I'm trying to be conscious of. So I can I can make that character as messy and as uh, as larger than life as she needs to be. So that that was a big hurdle for me that I, as you know in writing the next couple of episodes and still sort of working through. Um, I mean, production wise, uh, we didn't have, we only had twelve days to shoot what eighty five pages or something like that ninety pages. So wow. we had twelve days and we had. Um, a lot of locations, like in that, in the pilot, you can probably see there's a courthouse, there's like a domestic, there's a home, there's, you know, a, a truck yard, there's day, there's night, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff. Oh, the um, hair. Yeah, so, and then scheduling, and so, and, and one thing is like, you don't see in the pilot, but halfway through the series, Suri changes her hair. She, dye, she dyes her hair. It's blonde in the beginning. And then halfway through, she dyes it black. It has a different hairstyle completely. So production, we couldn't shoot chronologically. 
So we had to flip flop back and forth between these two hairstyles for, for Suri. And that just, that also created a nightmare. That made, that made you know, Sapinder have to be in like hair makeup chair at like 4 a.m. sometimes to, to, <laughs> to get oh my that. God, I forgot. That. I know, <laughs> to get that done. Oh, so yeah, only having 12 days, a lot of locations, um, the hair. Uh, we had like a really dedicated crew who, who just, yeah, who were great. And, and also the cast were, were, you know, in it to, you know, yeah, every day. So it was, it was a, it was a rush and it was fast, but uh, we got it done. So you had 12 days to shoot all three of the, of the um, episodes that you guys have so far. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that's quite an accomplishment. Like, especially for... It was fun. It wasn't <laughs> fun. Like, the last few days, I was like, okay, now maybe I'm having fun. But it was, it was hard. It was just, you know, you're really trying to, yeah, get those... Yeah, I, it's, so, it's so funny, like, to just go back in my mind and be like, how did we do that? Like, I really, I don't know. I don't and, know. And the other thing is the house location, which was a big, a big, a major location in the series, um, was Sapinder's parents' house. And, and they were living there while we were shooting there. So it was a huge disruption to them, you know? So <laughs> it was a lot of... Yeah. And to us sometimes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But that's indie filmmaking. Definitely. Um, so I wanted to ask about... Um, so for just between between Supinder writing it and creating it and starring in it and Renica, you directing it, what kind of dynamic was there with that? I mean, for, I know you brought Renica on, but like, was there any difficulty on like kind of giving up control? Cause this was your, your kind of your story. I don't think so. I think that Renica can speak to whether I gave whether whether I did or I didn't, um, but I think that like my philosophy, I think as a as a filmmaker and as an artist, is to work with people who are better than you. And in that sense, like we brought Renika on um, because we had sort of full confidence in her, what you know her her skill set as a director. And I think that like even with the even with the script before we went into production, it was. It was quite collaborative in that like Renika and I would spend hours on the phone just working through the script and just like making sure that both of us really understood the story and the characters as well as we could before we got to set. Um, but I don't think there was like any sort of a negotiation between my vision and Renika's vision. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's like a collaboration. Sapinder is very collaborative. I mean, it's, 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 I can't always consider it her show her vision, it's her voice. And I really, the other reason I wanted to be a part of the project was I wanted to support her. I wanted to like help her make that, you know, come to life. So I, I really, I really did, you know, I ask a lot of questions when I'm directing something. I do some, I do television as well. So I kind of sort of looked at it as a sort of a TV model, you know, and, and Sapinder's the showrunner. So um, yeah, I remember there was like one day, it was like in pre-production, we just spent, while we were supposed to be doing other stuff, like prep stuff, we like spent 14 hours just talking about the script, like going through the script. And uh, we had, yeah, we had a lot of conversations about the script and it, I felt very collaborative. I felt like it was, you know, we were a really good team. Yeah. And I think like in that sense, like I think that the, the trust went both ways because when we, when we wrapped and we had to go into the edit, Renika had to jump to another project and then so I sort of took over the edit and I think that like, you know, sometimes you'll get directors who want directors cut and want that control, but I think it was very much, it was extremely co collaborative in that sense. And I think that we sort of believed in each other's vision for the project because I don't know with Renika if every director would have sort of just been like, I trust you <laughs> with, with this, with, with your name on it as the, as the director. I think that that's a, that was a huge leap of faith. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's also, um, I mean, the television model is uh, you get, you know, you direct it and then you have your directors have their, their directors cut and then they go away. So I, I was okay with, you know, 
and it's your it's your it's your creation and i you we we were on the same page before so there was no um i mean and you're also very open to feedback so you all, always gave me the opportunity to have feedback on on like different cuts so it was very it was very clever i mean i you know it was it was it was nice to build on our our kind of previous collaborations on yeah. something bigger yeah and so I mean, that's what's fun about filmmaking, the collaboration. Like, it's not just you on yeah. your own making something. It's everyone bringing, you know, something to the table and bringing out the best in each other. So, yeah. 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 And I think that's what makes things much better. Like, and it also takes so much of the pressure off, I think. It's yeah. fun. It's, it's more fun. <laughs> it's more fun. Yeah. You don't want to be doing every, like, those are tours that are, like, writer, director, actors, I'm just like, oh God, it's so stressful. Like to to wear to wear all those hats and then be like, this is solely my vision. Like I just I don't I don't really think that that's true. I'm. That's great to hear, because uh, especially for yeah, writers can sometimes be very protective of their work and like hearing. It's great to hear on like that you guys were able to to trust each other and to really collaborate so well to make this. Um, and I think it really shows, like, I think it shows even just in the pilot of like the, I mean, cause for you, Supinder, you know, you're the, the primary actor and the lead of it. And I can tell of like, you're definitely like grounded and focused and like totally in character. And there's, you know, I totally believe that character, even to the point where I'm like, I like even here, I wanted to ask like how much of that insta-famous side of her comes from your own experience or was that just a part of the character no i think that that i mean like privately like maybe in like my dreams like my insta dreams um but i think that i think it was just a fascination that i had lex but something that i did that was interesting um was while i was writing the 410 i i created a separate um instagram for surrey uh i think it's like at surrey underscore d or something um which is very different than my personal instagram like it's 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 just we have a very different sort of taste <laughs> profile um but that that really helped me get into the frame of mind and understand that world and her perspective a little bit, but yeah, I wouldn't say that in terms of that, that Insta side of it, like, like I'm not even on Instagram right now. Like I deleted the app from my phone. I can't, it's just too much. I can't take it. So that's really interesting. So kind of like, not after you wrote it, but in the process of writing it, you, you gave Sur Suri a, an Instagram account. And like, that was a part of how you, figured out how to write the character, who you wanted this person to be. Yeah, I think I had to, as an actor, like I, it was, it was sort of because we didn't, I didn't get a lot of um, prep time as an actor. So I think that my prep as an actor really sort of happened in writing and just to sort of get in that, that, that world and understand her frame of mind when I was curating those pictures and stuff, it, re it really helped me sort of understand, you know, how, obsessed she is about what other people think of her and that that side of things yeah i just find that kind of cool because you see sometimes people who will do you know fake instagram accounts for things but it's usually like marketing so it's interesting to hear of like how it was actually something you used to help with your writing of the character and creation yeah and actually i think she has more followers than i do <laughs> <laughs> Oh, maybe, maybe I should just take over her. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to talk about, I think my, my favorite thing in the whole pilot was, um, uh, Suri's grandmother and, um, Huntington. That was <laughs> my favorite thing in the whole thing. It's just like, cause there's just that linguistic thing of, you know, cadence is so important in linguistics and we don't always recognize that. And so I thought that was just, to me, that was like so hilarious of just like Hunt, Ken, Kennedy and Huntington and how if you just have the cadence off, there's just no communication whatsoever. Yeah, well, those actually came from my dad <laughs> because 
I think for the, like, this is a running joke between me and him, but like Huntington is a real street. And for the longest time he would say, Huntington. Or, I can't even, I can't even do it the way that he does it. But I was like, what? Like he, I needed to pick up a car somewhere or whatever. And he was like, it's on Huntington. And I was like, that, like <laughs> what is that? And so, and then, and then I just added the Canadian because I mean, Brampton has all of these streets that are sort of like, because they, they have such a large South Asian population and my family lives around there that like, I'm just, these are just words that I'm familiar with. Yeah. Um, and it's a nice oh. moment in the, in the, in the pilot because it's interesting, like it's a quite a dark series. Like it can be quite, you know, it's, crime and all that kind of, and that was sort of like a, a moment of levity and then I don't know if this is I remember you saying that when you wrote it you you pictured it a bit lighter than it actually turned out to be but that moment in in the pilot it, it's it's a nice release when that happens because it's kind of built up in a courtroom scene and what's going on and then it, it has some nice truthful you know levity in there to to then push through to the more darkness yeah yeah, which is my favorite type of drama. I think in all dramas, like you need that moment of, um, I don't know about you guys, but during COVID I was binging Ozark and um, I forget the name of the character, but the guy who lives in the basement and goes for a swim every day, butt naked. And it's just like, I, I just love those in, in dramatic series when they have those moments of levity because like it's, it's like one, one life isn't like that. And two, it's just, it's hard to watch something that's just like heavy. Relentless, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. Life is, is mostly like this weird mix of drama and comedy that you never, you can never calculate. Like when you, when you look at the real drama of life, you're like, that's hilarious. That's very, very sad, but yeah. also hilarious. Like, um, what are you guys doing next? What's after either what's going happening next with the 410 besides the shooting of it? Are you guys going to any other film festivals? And then also what are, are you guys professionally doing next? Renica, do you want to take that first or? You, you talk about the 410 first. Yeah, so, um, so we're currently in development with, on three more episodes with the CBC. So I'm, I'm, I'm writing those and just figuring out what that looks like and then for festivals we just did new filmmakers um before we're doing salute your shorts and then we might be doing another one um so i will keep you guys posted i guess maybe before this fest because this festival starts on the 21st i believe so yes so what if we confirm that before the 21st and then um as an artist right now i'm just I'm writing, I'm auditioning, I'm shooting a movie in about a month. Um, just trying to juggle it all. Um, yeah, I'm on, I'm in post on a, on a feature, my first feature. Congrats. So we, um, we were doing some pickup days and then we had one more day to shoot and then COVID kind of interrupted. So we still have that one day to pick up, but, um, so post on that. And then I, like I said, I direct television. So I've got some TV gigs coming up, which I, it's going to be interesting in, in this new era to, 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 to direct like episodic. So we'll see how that, how that goes. Have you, have you been on any sets since COVID yet? Okay. I have not. Okay. I have, I haven't either, but I was just, I was curious. I've, I've heard, I've heard um, from people who have, and they were shooting actually during COVID in British Columbia and uh, you know they, they it was there were MOWs and they cast as the romantic leads like husband and wife couples and and uh, practice social distancing amongst the cast even so I mean it's yeah so it's it's, it's going to be different. I had a, a friend that was shooting a movie of the week and they actually hired her fiance as like the kissing double. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Yeah. So he's a, he's, he's a, it was Ian actually, uh, Ian who shot the 410. So oh. his, his girlfriend is an actress and she was shooting a movie and because of COVID she couldn't kiss the lead. So Ian got his actor credit because he would, he would just come in to, and I was just joking that that was his new special talent. <laughs> he just comes in for the kissing scenes. Wow. That's, that's really interesting. 
Yeah, I mean, like ingenuity, right? I, I I was up for something that I didn't end up booking, that but it was shooting out in Newfoundland, and the, as the cast, like if you flew out there, you had to stay in like quarantine hotel, and literally it meant that like from the time that you you landed, you went straight to the hotel to set, and then back to the hotel. But as like as part of the cast and crew, you could not leave the hotel, so they had special PAs to get things that you needed, but you were literally like, I was like, I don't even know if I would want that job. Like you're just literally in prison. Or, and the or somewhere else and you're like, you know, if you're from the States and you're shooting something in Canada, you've got to quarantine for two weeks, 14 days before. So even that is like, you might do be a day player for like two days, but you're quarantining for 14 days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a wild, wild west. But I think that like the, the nice thing about, here like I guess anywhere is that like we're we're doing what we can to make it work to to keep everybody safe and then also to keep people to pe keep people working so knock on wood yeah I think that speaks to as well as like the the independent film community and like the like that already has that spirit of ingenuity so I feel like this is going to be an important time for these kinds of like outside the studio system films and and TV series, those kinds of things, because they're already looking to having to be coming up with new ways of doing things anyway, might as well also include how to deal with COVID. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I would say like kudos to the producers out there that are having to figure this out. Like I, I just booked something and along with the script was this like 40 page document of like their COVID plan. And I was like, oh man, like I, what, a, what an added, um, you know, it's, art, it's already hard to, to go into production on independent stuff that like on, on top of that to, to add these guidelines. It's, um, that's a lot, it's a lot. So good work to those guys. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you for, for being here and answering questions. And um, it, was, it was fun. Thank you, Lex. Thank you.